哇！来 go。<laughs> wow! <laughs> uh, today we got a uh, Cimarron, a uh, good brother. I've been talking to him, I think, more than a year now.、Uh, he's got a lot of interesting、uh, information and knowledge、uh, in his travels and life and experience and his investigation, a whole different perspective,、uh, which correlates a lot of it with the investigation with the research we've been doing.、Uh, some label chief in Senegal heard for them that their people were from. Uh, India, and、uh-huh. they traveled one in in Africa one thousand year ago. And I have a video. You were talking about the West West Africa, and you're saying there's really、uh, no history of a real ancient kingdom in that part of the world,、um, you know. And、um, you also said that the、uh, uh, there was an ancient Ghana, but it was in Mauritania. It wasn't where it, it's located today.、Um, is that correct? Absolutely. Okay. Ghana. Was not in the place where it is located now. But it's the father of independence, Nkrumah, who renamed that place Ghana in、uh, its greetings to ancient、uh, kingdom, which was located in Mauritania, and the ancient capital of that kingdom was named Kumbi Sale. And this is. The only kingdom that you can say that it's ancient, because when that kingdom split, you find a lot of little kings and kingdoms in in Gambia and and in, in Nigeria. But when you look at the pyramids, the two pyramids that they found in Zinder,、uh, West Africa, and they、mm-hmm. said that they they are built as Aztec pyramid, and、uh, the type of pyramid is、um, like、um, stairs, where those, where those like、uh, like Aztec Zinder. It's a a, a place、uh, in in Niger, not Nigeria. You know there、mm-hmm. is two places.、Yeah. Nigeria, it's an English speaking country, and Niger, Niger, is a French speaking country. But they are, they 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 share the Zinder is very unknown. Found in Zinder. Z i z i n d e r in Niger, and it's Hausa people who find it, and they said that、um, there are inscriptions and all all, all but it, okay, the scholars won't talk about it. But yes,、mm-hmm. this is Zinder. Below two pyramid, but、okay. uh, when you so, look closer, you、so、this find looks, yeah, traces. This does look like an Aztec pyramid. But, so, yes,、know. yes, but they said that it's、um, much more older than the Gizeh Plateau, like、okay. much more older. Okay, that we know that the Gizeh Plateau it's a reconstruction, yeah, of ruins. Yeah. Made yes. in the fifties, and yeah, shout out to、uh, the, UB, it, UB News. There is footage of it. Yep, shout out to UB, <laughs> UB、yes. News for exposing that. Same thing with Stonehenge in England.、Yes. I have a footage, a full footage of of the construction in the fifties, so called archaeological site. <clears throat> This、yes. is when they built Stonehenge sixty years ago. Yes, I have a footage. Fair use. Okay. Yeah. So see, this is before they started building, and there was nothing there. You see, where's the stones? All right. And if you you just do a simple research, you look at all. All the kingdoms in West Africa before colonization,、uh-huh. you won't find a lot, and you won't find ancient or <clears throat> antiquity or things like that. Yeah. So, so、um... there is some, but it's the Songhai in Mali, and、uh, the the river Niger, 
with um, Sony Aliber, and um, but it's not huge, and it's not ancient, because yeah. those people they came from other places, like in Congo. You have a big debate, and many tribes of Congo said that they are not from Africa. The 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 Don, mm -hmm. a tribe called the Don, D I D A N, in Cote d'Ivoire, Ivory Coast, they claim to be Jew, and they um, had contact with Israel, and they sent a rabbi, and the rabbi certified that they were Jew, original Jew. Even their language is Jew. I can show you the link. Although the well, when you say are, when you, when you say I'm Jew, Hebrew, Hebrew. Okay. Um, so Hebrew. from, yeah, from I can show you many where did they originate? They said that um, they are from the uh, tribe of Dane, and uh, after okay. the um, invasion of Babylon, they they flee, and they they arrived in Ethiopia. And in Ethiopia, when they arrived in Ethiopia, they cross the continent until they reach the Sudan and um, a place called the Mali. And from the Mali, they reached after the Mali Empire splitted, they founded other villages and other little kingdoms in West Africa. But West Africa, the first people inhabitant of that land was the pygmy the Khoisan and even the Africa know that the Bantu people came in Central Africa and conquered that place and they are not from that place every Bantu know that even their traditions so uh, where, say so that, that where do you the Bantu do you think came they are... and eradicate the pygmy people yeah Yep, that's what um and um also um didn't they um with the Khoisan didn't they uh, the Khoisan were already there and that they have stories similar that the Bantu came. Yes, the Khoisan were al al already there. Like okay. the Pygmy. And uh, where do you think they originated? The Bantu. The Pygmy? No, the Bantu. The Bantu? Yeah. I think the Bantu, I think, and uh, you will say that I'm a, I am a crazy guy. I think T they me. are from Caucasian mountain. Oh, oh, I am. That's that's where my research. Me, they are oh, listen, from... that's my my research is leading to the same, and I got future videos on that. And I've been trying to tell people, you know, you know, because when you see your Aboriginal or Indigenous Russian people from the Caucasus mountain, you know, that's who they were really depicting when they were wearing the those hats the uh, i don't know if you've heard of the Abs absakians i believe abscassian mm -hmm. so these are from the caucasus mountain these people right here and they call them afro absakian abcassian but they're not afro anything there's no genealogy or proof to say that there's a migration from africa over there and that's why they're colored now if you see um a lot of the times if you, if you, if you, you know, even in the more science, uh, they'll tell you black Asiatics, right? And um, on some original anthropological books, they're listing the uh, Caucasian, you know, as a so-called Negro person. You know, we know that the Slavs, the Slavs, uh, there was two types of Slavs, the dark-skinned Slavs and the light-skinned Slavs, not just, uh, they were from Moravia. And also for the Vikings, Yes, the Danes. Yeah, we know that like Viking Danes. is a yeah. name given for uh, by the historian, but the yeah. Viking they did not call themselves Vikings. You know, in Spanish there's a word very uh, close to the French word, vermejo. Okay, red. Yes, red. Okay, uh -huh. you said yeah. it because yeah. in French it's the same. When you say vermeil, in French we say vermeil. And when you say verme, it's a, like a brown reddish. Yes, it's like mahogany, you know. Mm -hmm. It's like mahogany wood. Okay, I got a an Absakian right here. You see him? It's from yes. The Cauc Caucasus region. So you see those hats that uh, Russian soldiers wear? They were really mimicking the Afro. What would be warmer? 
um, you know, straight, fine hair, soft, or something like this in, in, for a place like that in, in the Caucasus region or Russia or something like that. What do, what do you think would be warmer? You know, in Russia, there is desert. There is hot, hot desert. Russia is, is uh, different climate. But mm -hmm. when you see Eskimos or uh, Inuit people, they are brown skin of a copper, copper color skin and they live up north. And when you go to Scandinavia, you see the people are blonde, blue eyes and very, very light uh, complexion of skin. So the climate does not um, really influence the yeah, no, it's not the climate. Color of the no, skin. definitely not. It's not the climate. This does definitely not. Definitely not. That was just something like saying out of Africa, everything out of Africa. So it's not. I don't think we uh, uh, nations are you know crayon colors. So people are crayon colors. But you see, um, something they're wearing wool in their head to keep warm. That's what I'm trying to show you. You see, but he, you know, he could just use his hair. And it looks like they might have even had wigs on these people. The great poet in Russia, his grandfather is a, a black man. And they invented a story of a, of a slave from Cameroon uh, shipped to um, Europe and uh, sold to uh, Ottoman uh, Sultan. And from there, uh, he was offered to the Tsar of Russia and raised as a son of the emperor of Russia and sent to Paris to learn military stuff and uh, got back to Russia and organized all the mit military system of Russia. Abraham Petrovich. But I, uh, I think that the story of the enslavement from Cameroon and throughout Europe and Turkey, Ottoman, uh, you know, Istanbul. And I think it's not, uh, it's too much for me. I think they were actually Russians. And why so much privilege given to Abraham Petrovich if he's not uh, the emperor's son or nephew or what else? Yep. as a so-called slave and you gave him all so so much privilege and a so high position in russia right now i'm, I'm going through the website uh real history a uh, really good website you know they always got some good information showing us the black russian uh, in balkans uh, it says the original alexander russians pushkin here. the grandfather of pushkin is totally black <laughs> totally black not like uh so they made up what? so you're saying they made up the cameroon story right yes i what do you think his uh genealogy really is his his uh, ancestry or his bloodline is is the songir man he's a songir tribe man for me that's just, just uh, yeah. shown uh the he's one of these black he's one of these so-called uh, black russians yes okay yeah All right, that's deep. So, you know, this is a whole history like we're about to get into, you know, plan to get on. Uh, uh, so I, I, that's why I wanted to get the, this brother in here so he can, uh, you know, based on his research, what he's seeing, even over there, he's gone to libraries over there. He goes all over the world. Uh, he travels and he's learning and he's studying all these things. And uh, this is not this is not um, made up stuff. This is actually images from russia the iconic uh, iconography over there the christian one especially you know it just shows you a can lot check of... the the scriptures yeah you can check check the scriptures the um, the writings on it and you can see it's, it's cyrillic writings it, it is mm -hmm. russian scriptures it's uh, russian writings on it and um on my pinterest i have like um three thousand image of black people in the medieval uh, european continent well we appreciate you know the knowledge 
Yeah, it's a lot of history being left out that, you know, they don't tell us. Uh, they just wanted us to picture all of Europe as white, you know. And, you know, they started whitewashing everything. <laughs> we just, you know, vibing. We're just building with the brother C. Marone. Episode one, Cootie Mail Meditations. <laughs> no worries. This is great <laughs> images right here. Great images right here. And, and you can go down there. Eh? you will find a lot of it <laughs> yes that you never so, saw all right so we're supposed to imagine that all these people ended up in uh, africa and you know so what do you think we'll, we'll... now you're saying a lot of the african elders right you told us earlier they told us that they originate from somewhere else not not from africa right yes In fact, if you listen to all oral tradition of all the tribes and all the people and the nations in Africa, they would say that the place they are living in the current days are not the place where their ancestors were living. That means that they came from somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And when you study all the oral traditions they find they tell you they all come from the great water uh, beyond the great water so what is that great water yeah so we know that um in my corn videos we know that the uh monday uh speaking people they were um bringing it uh they had their stories of corn bringing their corn with them from from that side of the world from coming from america and you know where else would they get corn from you know what do you think about the corn thing you know all these ancient people had corn right in west africa before columbus and you can add to that that portuguese when they came first came on west coast of africa they saw women with pipes smoking tobacco And that plant is originally from the Americas, not yep. from Africa. Okay. And it was before colonization, before shipping a slave from Portugal, because the Inquisition of Catholic Church, they were hunting Jew and Muslim at that time, and they become crypto Jew, crypto Muslim. Yeah. And Even in France, there were uh, uh, a law proclaimed by the king called Lady de Nantes. Mm -hmm. And this is a, a proclamation of the king. Lady, Lady de Nantes, it means it, it was to ban all Jew and, and Protestant from France. Just kick them out from France. And so they yeah. had to go somewhere else. And they, a lot of went to the americas to practice their religion freely yes so we've been uh doing the research with that we've been doing a lot of people's genealogy uh, it is matching up um so you know um it is real real history as you're saying um these these people were being uh persecuted all through europe by the catholic empire or other powers and uh you know they would have to be moving around like you said for them going to america was like it was like a promised land where they can practice their religious freedom freedom of religion right that's you know all that's part of the constitution so, of america and all that and it, it has an origin so that we can deduce that the catholic inquisition of the uh -huh. catholic church when they hunted jew and muslim um most of them were black complexion you have to know that not all from africa mm -hmm. uh, you have to know that too yep, because definitely. the king the king of spain was black yep carlos quintos and uh, there is two um, charles the fifth right um, when you look his genealogy you see that he was related to german royal uh, family french royal family or uh, austria and uh, Holland and uh, also uh, England and Italy. All those families, they were uh, perpetuating weddings, uh, marriage among the royal f family of Europe. So that's why you can find all the black 
so-called black nobility in Europe and the majority of, of the people became white because there were a lot of invasions like the Visigoth, mm -hmm. uh -huh. like the, the uh, I don't know how to say it in English, but they were from uh, uh, Mongolian Hun. steppes. Yeah, the Hun. Yes, the Hun. And they, they conquered Frank, Frank Reich. They conquered the German and they arrived in France. And when I was a little boy in, in France, I studied this, that Attila and the Huns came to France and they, 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 they crushed yeah. the Germans. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh, I learned that I, when I, I believe, was a I kid believe this, and everyone uh, knows that. See, I believe, because uh, based on my research. No, this is a scan. This is a scan of the canvas to show how they white, whitewashed the 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 canvas because the scan that you saw mm -hmm. just up there is a proof that it was a dark uh, compassion people and they whitewashed it so that's why yeah. they scan it yeah i saw the scan okay so they scanned it and it okay. looked like yeah like it was a different person after it got scanned okay so this is uh this is what's found in the uh larco museum in lima peru that's what i show people a lot and uh this is where it shows uh charles v as a so-called black man right here this is carlos quinto as you're saying carlos quinto and these are the incas before him and they're almost the same complexion you see um so yeah you even got mango manco capac who's supposed to be the originator All right, it's a little close up right here. It's Charles V. So I'm not sure, you know, we can't go backwards, you know, so every time, you know, we got to stop thinking every time we, we're talking about like a Spaniard or English or Portuguese. This uh, picture is not uh -huh. the only one of uh, Carlos Quintos. You, yeah. you just uh, shown uh the one which is in uh, peru mm -hmm. in a in a church in peru but this one is in europe and there is mm -hmm. three other ones that you can clearly recognize his face uh, without oh yes this one but when you uh, uh read the comment below they say that it's another person but you can't recognize it is the same yeah, so it says uh, this painting is falsely called the Balthasar, the Moorish King. Yes, they try to make these uh, people basically the uh, one of the three wise men all the time, uh, like mythical, like it's just a, uh, an a allegorical painting. But it's that's that's their excuse. We know, we know, you know, we know, we know that painting in the Larco Museum. That's not uh, allegorical. Um, so yeah, he, this person's dressed just like an emperor of the Holy Roman Emperor would dress the clothing. If you understood everything, the sephir that he's holding, you would know who this person is. So, and it's not no uh, Balthasar or Moorish king, it's uh, Char Charles V, Holy Roman Emperor, you know, so it's a Catholic, you know, uh, so Imperial Crown of Austria, yeah, that's what he's holding right there. And this is a face. <laughs> what is this? Blackout history appears in the reign of Joseph Napoleon. Napoleon is another suspect. You know, I'm, I'm going to do a video on. Napoleon was a, a Corsican man. You know that? A, 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 a Corsica? Is a, is a, yes, yes. All his family is from Corsica. Corsica. He's, he's not yeah. a real French. Yeah, Corsica is yeah. an island in Mediterranean Sea. It's not okay. from the continent. It's from yeah. an island of of the yeah. of the Mediterranean Sea. Yeah, and, and this is Corsica, their coat of arms. You see yeah. all the Moors. I, yeah. I went three months in Corsica mm -hmm. and I studied the story of Corsica in Corsica and I interviewed a lot of white people who told me that they are uh descent of black Moors. And I was in Bonifacio, the very south of uh, of Corsica. Okay. The map that you are that you are showing. Okay. I so took you've been the there. Boat yeah. From Marseille, and uh, from Marseille, I I got to to Corsica, and I arrived in a port called Porto Vecchio. 
Okay. And I was surprised that uh, all the people they just tattooed the the a black uh, head on their body, it just like everyone. And I said, "Why yeah. are you doing that?" <laughs> yeah. So they Napoleon. Said, so Napoleon is. Flag. Nap this is the flag of our. So country. Napoleon Bonaparte is, is from Corsica, and Corsica, as you can see, everybody. Yes. Yes. In the middle middle of the Mediterranean in the middle of the Moorish world at that time. This is the Iberian no. uh, world right here. Napoleon yeah. did not understand a, 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 a word of French. <laughs> French is not so what the he, mother what did he tongue speak? of Napoleon. What did he speak? Uh, uh, the Corsican, Corsican, uh -huh. Corsican people have their own language. Okay. What do you? What is it related to? In it's English. a Roman's language from the Italo-Dalmatian family that is spoken predominantly in the Mediterranean island Corsica. Related to the Tuscan varieties from the Italian peninsula. You must check the the daughter of King Louis uh, uh, of France, and the Mores of More is there is a um, uh, a a picture of her, and she's totally black. And if well, she is the daughter of the king, yeah. <laughs> the well, king must we, be some kind of the, uh, something. Well, we read all the anthropological, well, many of the anthropological books of uh, the indigenous people I, of Italy, and I, they were all describing them uh, as swarthy, negro, dark-skinned. So, you know, and we've seen the pottery. We've seen, you know, I mean, we know, I mean, look at it. It's, I mean, it's bordered to Africa, right? Um, and all this, we know the history of the Pegasus people, the... Uh, you know, Greece, you know, with the ancient Greeks, we know a lot of the, all, most of this was all Swarti, you know, all Swarti people, dark skinned people, melanated people. So we know the true history. So when you're saying um, he's from Corsica, you know, that's just, to me, I already knew. And everyone, you know, cause I got a future that. video on, on Napoleon and I'm investigating him and his relation in Haiti and in the Americas. I, I really believe that when they're talking about Napoleon and France being in Egypt, they were talking about real the real Egypt. And that's why that whole area was France, the Louisiana the, Purchase and all that. And, 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 you know, they were shipping things out of America, yes, yes. putting them, putting them but, in museums and talking about it came from Egypt. Yes. There was nothing in Egypt because you let said it earlier, tell, they just rebuilt that. Yes, they rebuilt that. And let me mm. tell you something. When the French conquered Egypt, English people came just after the French and they kicked out the French from Egypt and they took all the research that the French did and all the artifacts. And that's why the Rosetta Stone is in British Museum because the French, they lose the war in Egypt. They were shipped to France as losers by the English. They signed a treaty of a resignation. English people took all the artifacts. And the French, they conserved only few little figurines. I won't say statue because it was allowed only uh, to take what you can wear by yourself. So mm -hmm. some drawings and uh, things like that. But the French, they, they lose all the years of study. Uh -huh. That means that between the the decline of Roman Empire and Napoleon, no one could read or write, yeah. even knew that language. It's like they invented all. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, we, or we, they we, took it from on, another place and bring it there. I, I've seen the uh, documentaries on that, and, actually, um, so I, I wouldn't disagree. Under the Rosetta Stone and what they so, yeah. for my part, before Napoleon, I, uh -huh. I can show you maps of 500 years, maps of 300 years, and there is Africa on those maps. There is maps of 600 years, and there is Africa on the on those maps. You can see castles all over the continent, but mm -hmm. you can't find a single pyramid anywhere <laughs> so i told you that i have a degree in arabic the arabic they conquered egypt in 639 so uh, it was the seventh century mm -hmm. they did not notice any pyramid 
you cannot find a word on pyramids in Arabic scriptures, in Arabic chronicles, in hmm. Arabic historians. Ooh. A single, I, I speak mm. Arabic. Wow. I went to many Arabic speaking countries. And you wow. can't find any pyramids in any documentation in Arabic. It <laughs> does not exist. And they are the people who conquered Egypt before Napoleon. And they can't say a word about it because they didn't even saw it yeah before napoleon and it <laughs> so so napoleon introduced the, the concept of, of the egypt story. and uh, the whole uh, pyramids and all that the whole mythological world the whole story why they named that place louisian it was because yeah of the king after the king of france he was named after the king of france so that means that the french yeah yeah came king louis in the mississippian yes uh, yes <laughs> king louis and i told you that the daughter of king louis uh, was black there is a a a, a, a very famous a canvas of it and yeah I, well uh, i got i got a future video i got a future canvas That, that actually correlates with my future video about the Washita Moors and um, their relation with the King and Louis and who was King, who was Joseph Masson Rouge, who got the land grant, the Spanish land grant, and why he got a Spanish land grant, and what happened to King Louis the 17th. So yeah, there's, a, there's a whole mystery right yes. there. And uh, yes, we're going to we're gonna, we're gonna link the, it up. Uh, Louis, Louis, Louis the 14th and the 16th they are the the, the, the most famous king and yeah the, the 16th got, got the 16th got um he got beheaded right he got murdered right he, there was yes. the, <laughs> the french revolution the french revolution and then he got tried and he got beheaded his son supposedly there's, was arrested his son and this no, is this is, this is a no spoiler french revolution this, this is, is yeah, all yeah. fake and, and yeah. lies there's no yeah. french revolution And so tell us tell us what the they revolution, did revolution you know the mm -hmm. bourgeois how do you the wealthy people yeah the bourgeois they wanted yeah. the power because they had more money than the king yeah but the privileges yeah. of the monarchy did not fit with their agenda so they organized mm -hmm. how to raise the people the, the population against but it's only the people the poor people in paris so why they increased the price of flour okay the flour you know, you, okay. flour mm -hmm. flour to uh, to make bread to increase the the, the price uh, and the and the, the poor people of paris they went uh, in town and there were wealthy people who came and used that uh, force, the force of the people and the anger of the people for their own purposes. Yeah, it was led by one But, guy. Uh, I know what you're talking about. He was a very wealthy yes, guy. There's a lot no of French Revolution because the rest yeah. of the country, there was no revolution in the, in the, other, in, in the rest of the country. And you have to know that at that yeah. time, no people could speak French. French is a very new language. One of the persons you were mentioning was Maximin Robes Robespierre. He was, um, and then the other yeah, guy, yes, but uh, they, George Danton, George's Danton. After yeah, that. after that he got executed. Danton, he did. Robespierre. Yeah. yeah, this is this is all whitewashing. Most of it right here. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna because we're investigating all these people, and uh, we're seeing the true meaning, like you're saying, behind all these things. What they're calling a French Revolution and why they beheaded. Some uh, of them you know. were advocating for uh, the um, abolition of of slavery because some of them said now everyone is free from monarchy, mm -hmm. so we want the Negroes in the Americas to be free too. And uh, some of the Jacobins, mm -hmm. the Parliament, did not agree with that, so they killed them. No. <laughs> you know what you call French Revolution? It's not a revolution at all. <laughs> yeah. You were telling me um, 
about the first uh, European that actually went and then survived and came back from Africa. What was his name again? The French guy? René, René Callier. Between René Callier, there was only one people who were not... Uh... Uh, African who reached Timbuktu and it, its name was Ibn Battuta, uh, one of a famous traveler, uh, very famous in Arabic tradition because Ibn Battuta he wrote a lot of chronicles that uh, we use in his, in history nowadays. Yeah. So I, 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 you know, I, I believe, you know, this is a whitewashing image of him. Of course, there was no uh, photographs during this time. This is a drawing. Um, so Auguste René Callier was a French explorer and the first European to return alive from the town of Timbuktu. Callier had been preceded by Timbuktu by British officer Major Gordon Lane, who was murdered in September 1826 on leaving the city. So look, when we talk about Europeans arriving to Africa, right, you guys got to pay attention. This is the first one that actually made it out alive. Say, hey, hey, we can start going over there to colonize There's people over there that's trying to make deals. So this is the first guy. This is in the 1830s, right? It says, Calais returned to St. Louis in 1824 with a strong desire to become explorer and visit Timbuktu. In order to avoid some of the difficulties experienced by the early expeditions, he planned to travel along disguised as a Muslim. So he's in the 1700s, 1800s, and he's a he's trying to disguise himself as a Muslim, but he's a, he's look he looks like this white guy right here. Do you think he can disguise himself as a Muslim if he looked like this? I don't know. Be logical. All right. So this is the guy that supposedly made it out alive first. So now we're talking about that they were bringing so-called maybe, Africans. Maybe you know? he converted to Islam to uh, to travel uh, across. Uh, Senegambia and reach Timbuktu because if you yeah you weren't there you were probably be killed but <laughs> maybe he pretend to be Muslim I I show you that at that time uh, if you were Christian and white mm -hmm. and so uh, because the Tubabu the white people we call in all over West Africa we call all the The white people Tubabu. Mm -hmm. uh, the Tubabu, uh, if they were converted to to Islam, maybe they could travel uh, uh, further yeah. into the continent. Yeah, but I understand that, but that's what I'm case, saying. You but probably if he looks, won't. But if he looks like this, he, I mean, I, <laughs> you know, he can't really disguise himself, even you know. So I understand why he had to do it. But my whole point is, this is this is they're whitewashing this. We got to see. You got to from what I'm learning. We you got to prove. You got these drawings don't do nothing to me anymore, because I've caught them so many times lying. <laughs> I've caught them so many times showing us a white image of somebody who was of color and looked totally different. You know. So who's this guy they painted here? When there's so when history when they're saying you know French this French guy came you know a lot of the times it was a person of, like you're saying of color complexion and we, we you're, we're always thinking like you know a white person because they just say French we just hear French in our head um, but like this French guy uh, so if he was the first European that got out there how did how would they have um, established themselves to be able to get millions of Africans right if they had never even had a colony established themselves yet until the 1800s can I mean what is the local legend there you've been to uh, Senegal Right? Is that where you've been, and what other countries have you been? Yes, I've I've been I've been to Morocco uh -huh. uh, about eight eight times. I've okay. been to Mauritania. I, I crossed all Mauritania three okay. times, and I spent ten years in Senegal okay. in Senegambia. Okay, 10 years in Senegal and Sen wow. And what is like, do, do they have uh, stories of millions of their tribal men or hundreds or thousands of their tribal people being taken in ships? None of them. None Not of them. Not a single You guys heard memory. that, right? None of Not them. Not a single memory. None of them. And as a people raised in Caribbean, I was raised in the story of slave trade. It's a part of my story as a French Caribbean. And I went and I came to Senegal. 
I hoped that with the mythology of Gore Island, that the people would remind it. But none of them. When I explain to people, why do you think there is so much black people in America? And for them, it's not an argument. They say oh, they, they can be black, but not African. For them, they have no memory of that. Because in Senegambia, it's represent only 5% of the slave, African slave trade. But when you go to Daume, when you go to Congo, Cameroon, you find the industrial captive uh, uh, factory of captives. You know? Because if I explain to you the process, how the, the economy of the 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 Kanem, the Sudan, and the the Songhai uh, of Mali uh, was the central economy of Africa, and when the uh, shipping of the uh, Jew of Portugal and Spain and Holland went along the the, the African coast, the kings um, uh, along the coast they uh, they they had an alliance they mm -hmm. alliance themselves with the european and mm -hmm. when i say european i don't mean white yeah you know when yeah. you say french at that time there yeah. was no difference yeah. between the french of that comprehension or white or, or exactly. tony or they just say french mm -hmm. it's very very late in the history that it's appeared with the black code before the black code you, you have not such a differentiation this is a washington post report i showed it in one of my videos gory island the door no return it was one of supposedly one of the biggest and most millions of africans went through that door and uh, it turned out that it was never a slave port it was a mansion false. it was false um so it had nothing to do totally you know, this, false they still did. I went this. two time yeah. on Gore Island. I visited all the islands. <laughs> so you've been there. So you can say so it's false. You've so been there. Yeah, I've, I've so been you, there. Yeah, so I, you're not, I, I, you're not in your neighborhood. The so -called in a... No return door. The okay. so-called no return door. I enter it. I, I watch all and I study um, the book of Jean-Luc Engrand, who is from those family in Gore and yeah. he explained after uh, being studying uh, the, the the certificate of birth of death of uh, you know uh, who own this uh, who own that on that island who brought this who brought that and when you read the book they said in a period of 150 years there is only 1000 500 slaves that transited to Gore Island and it is not in the in the, the house that they show you because that house we know today that that house was owned by a woman called Anna Pepin Cola hmm. and that woman never possesses slaves yeah never 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 she she buy slave for sabotage you know sabotage and they fixed a higher price so high price that no one could buy it those wealthy women in gore they were a mix of portuguese and the daughters of the serer kings of the saloon in africa so they were mixed people like uh, descent from jew portuguese jew and uh, uh, king of the saloon uh in senegal so okay. uh, they were mixed people but they are they were very wealthy the senior so we got so we got we, we got no slave ships right we got we got no genealogy going back to africa we, we know that these places that were supposedly uh, you know millions of people were leaving actually false it wasn't real um we know we studied uh, indentured servitude we studied who was really coming over here being persecuted sent over here to the americas who was really being enslaved um we you you actually mentioned that to me um about angola right we know that the uh, portuguese yes. and spaniards were enslaving many indians many indians 
Uh, we know that they were in Brazil first for many years before they started colonizing Angola. This is from part 14 of my video from indigenous American to African American, the transatlantic slave trade in reverse. And um, I was reading from this book, Africans and Native Americans from Jack Forbes. He did the whole research. He has great sources for what he's saying. Uh, anybody can go verify. Um, but he was letting us know in this part of the video. And uh, you're going to tell us a little bit about Angola too, um, about the Bra Brazilians, what they, what part they had in, to do in Angola. Um, in this video, we were basically, uh, he was letting us know that Angola was colonized by Brazilians. Now, what type of Brazilians? That's what we have to look at individually, case by case. A lot of them, yes, or are, are Indian, uh, mixed with Sephardic Jews and Moors, or just Indian, or just a straight up Sephardic Jew and Moor that was in Brazil. We know that they were there with the Dutch and all that. Uh, and they were getting kicked out. We got my video, Sephardic Jews, and we know the Huguenots, the Protestants, and all these people were in down there as well. Uh, so what was your take on Angola? So Angola actually nowadays is a Portuguese speaking country. So San Tome, right? San next Tome. to, the, um, the, next to the island of yes, the San island Tome of San Tome, is... where we read uh, before, was one of the largest, and the, where they had started the sugar plantations mm. and many Sephardic. This Jews, place Moors. was a laboratory before yeah. to conquer the Indians of the America. You okay. have all you have all to know that mm. those places was the laboratory before because they uh, they they built the first plantation and uh, and sugar cane on uh, on that place you know and um, they raised sons and and daughters of captives born in the plantation raised in the plantation and they they call uh, those people criollo Criollo so, yeah. is a mm -hmm. word. Yeah, it's a word to say that you were born and raised in a plantation. Okay. That's the meaning of Criollo. Wow. So, Doesn't matter if you were the uh, owner, whether you, you lived are. there or the servant, right? It just, just you yes, were associated. Yes, yes. Okay. Yeah, all right. Yes, okay. yes. You, if you you were white or, or, or black or yeah. if you were born and raised in the plantation, you are Creole. Yep. So, so um, that makes sense. I that would makes sense. say that Creole is a process. Yes. Yes. It's a process of assimilation. It's a process of acculturation. Mm -hmm. But the laboratory was that the first um made those plantation in accordance and they agreed with the african king the elites and the elites saw that the european built like a fortress and when they saw that the african king they um they brought they bought bricks from england and they built their own plantation on the continent, on the coast. Okay. And they started to have their own slave. I can show you a place. Just Google Bimbia for me, please. Bimbia, B-I-M-B-I-A. Yes. And you, you will see the traces of an African master of plantation. So Bimbia and is a- And they needed slave. Bimbia. Island. Bimbia is in Cameroon. Cameroon, and Bimbia okay. is a 47 acres land mm -hmm. that are not all explored, but it was a plantation. And it is not possible in any way that the white people mm -hmm. invested 47 acres on the continent. I don't mean on an island next to the shore not an island next to the shore on the continent 47 acres without the authorization of the of the african king without the authorization of the elites okay it's, it's not possible so you're saying that they had plantations there um uh, but we're, they weren't they weren't yes. being managed by europeans these were their plantations these were their their plantation plantations. they needed yes. slave for it Mm -hmm. They needed slaves. These Africans needed slaves, free labor. 
And so you're saying that many and of the American place, Indians, many, many, the Portuguese brought many American Indians over there. So that, that what you're saying, Sephardic Jews uh, from the Catholic Empire that were being kicked out. And that's why many, many, many of these people are claiming the, the Jewish ancestry from the Sephardic Jews and the Moors that were coming from Spain and Portugal. Do you have uh, stories of them? Yes. You, you see those ruins? Yeah. This is the ruins of plantation. When you study that place, you see there is pipes, big pipes, industrial pipes to, mm -hmm. to make uh, uh, palm wine and uh, uh, oil and all stuff like they do with, with the, all the big companies in Africa yeah. now. Yep. You know, the big company so, in Africa now, they are related with the elites of Africa. Yeah. And the elites of Africa, they just eat the money of the people and they don't share it with, with Africans because they invest their own money in in Western world. So the, 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 well, the, the wealthy uh, uh, um, Africans of the elites, they don't invest the money. Yeah. in africa they invest in western world so you don't see the fortune of the people in africa because all investment is in trust anonymous trust and when you check out the the dates of the foundation of all companies of uh, uh of west indies the yeah. shipping company of west indies when you you check out all the dates it, it just doesn't fit with the consensus story. Okay. Because they told you that the first African uh, was enslaved to America in the 15th century. Because okay. at first, uh, African merchants invested their money. Because I told you the, la the first laboratory of plantation were in Africa before yeah. the colonization <laughs> you showed me pictures of how they were treating their their own people how they were enslaving their own people and they were whipping them and they were doing this kind I have of uh, engravings this started in africa before the americas before any of that concept or any of those ideas of whipping or anything like that plantation type slavery overworking people this was happening in africa right in 15 1400s even before the europeans way before is that correct is very correct and you see you have to see it's the ancient uh, kingdom of Dahomey the Cameroon and Congo was the major place of slavery because there was many merchant from those country who went to Brazil mm -hmm. and Mexico so at first before to visit the merchants Europe we know who the merchants were. The the African merchant, the, the African merchant went to the Americas. They saw slave. They ordered slave like a meal in the restaurant. Okay. And they shipped slave. And you're talking about from North, Af Americas North Africans? To those or, African or plantations. Okay. Hmm? When you're saying the and African merchants, that, who are you speaking about? Like North Africans or who are you speaking about? I'm talking about African from uh, Congo, from uh -huh. Cameroon. Okay. From, uh, uh, I'm talking about the Bamileke, for example. Let, if you want me to, to give you a lot of uh, name of tribes, I can give you. Who were they coming with? They were coming the... with the Portuguese. The Portuguese, the, um, okay. The people from the Holland and Spain and Italians. Okay, okay. And, so uh, they were coming with that, the, the French Sephard and the British. They were, they were coming the with French the Sephardic and, Jews yes. and the Muslim Moors that were being expelled from uh, At, Iberia. First, with Portuguese. You know the Treaty of Tordesillas? You should do uh, a research on it and uh, you will find out that this treaty is to negotiate a limit where Spanish can colonize in America and to determine what is the limit uh, that the Portuguese are allowed to, uh, uh, to uh, colonize. And you know that uh, Christopher Columbus is not the, the first to arrive in the Americas, but because yeah. we know that the Portuguese arrived in Brazil before the Spanish. It's well known. The Treaty of Tordesillas well, we know uh, that's a future can, video. Uh, 
the Portuguese were actually, um, especially like um, people like Columbus and Vespucci, and then they, they had access to um, what the Portuguese, the navigations they were taking, and they had already reached South America, you're right. And, um, you know, we're, that's a future video. We're going to talk about, um, what's his name, Salvador Fernandez Arco soon. Don't worry. But what it's important to understand that the African merchant from Congo uh, uh, and uh, Uh, Cameroon and uh, Benin, when they arrive in Brazil and mm -hmm. Mexico with the Portuguese and the Spanish and the Italians and after that the French and the British, but at first with the Portuguese and Spanish. Yeah, yeah. And after that, the Jew of Holland. And the Jew of Holland, they conquered Suriname uh, near to the Guyanas and they were kicked out from Brazil by the Portuguese and the, the Jew yeah. of Holland needed just, to yeah, we, uh, we, to exile themselves in the Caribbean so in Guadeloupe and Martinique we welcome those uh, Jew from uh, Holland who huh? were kicked out from Brazil to uh, to the Caribbean because they knew the secret the secret To, uh, uh, to, purify, to, to purify the sugar. Because at yeah. first, we did not know how to make the sugar pure, yeah. to transform it. Uh, what, well, that's, that's what I'm so saying. Like we, we, no we, we recently went over all this information, a lot of the uh, parts of nature of the world, where we know that the people who really first started the sugar refineries and, and, and all that were Sephardic Jews. They were the merchants. Now, when you're saying African, um, you know, I, I agree. Maybe there was Africans in it, but this was all started being funded. The ships and all these networks was with the Sephardic Jews of Spain. They were doing the sugar in the Madeiras in San Tomas. They were um, being sent there to work. And they were, because of their skills and knowledge, they were sent to Brazil. The Portuguese allowed them to live as free, you know, uh, crypto, you know, Muslims and Jews. And, you know, when you're saying that then the French came, and then the Dutch came, we know these are tags. We know a lot of these people are the same people. A lot of these people were the French Huguenots were the same as Sephardic Jews and Moors. A lot of the Dutch were the Sephardic Jews. You know, we know that there was, there was just a lot of tags going on and it was more about people uh, with their religious views and all that. You can find that um, Antonio the first of Congo, uh, the guy that you put on your miniature, the first image of your video. But that's what I'm saying, that a lot of these French uh, uh, European people, they're saying they're, they're Congo ambassadors. And I haven't seen the proof of that. And that's what I'm trying to tell you. This, this could be a, a straight up Portuguese. Why is his name Antonio Manuel? The first king who convert to Catholicism, Alfonso uh, the first, it was the Mani Congo, a powerful king in Congo, and he imposed this religion and he built churches. In Congo, you can see the churches from um, the 15th century. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, Congo is 80 million of people and there is only 1% of Muslim. So that means that Congo is one of the most Catholic and almost Christian country in the world. So why, but why, okay, and, um, so now, so now that leads me to, to, is, to, to uh, want to study the Congo people themselves. So why are they so Catholic? I don't know, because <laughs> nowadays the Congo people say that they are the Bena Israel for real in Congo that say, We are not African. We are we are Hebrew Israelites. We are not from here. And I can okay. I can. So even share even with Africans. You many things. Okay. Okay. Well, that's, I believe say you. That all the time. I believe you. So many. So there's many Africans saying they ain't Africans themselves, even in Africa, and so they're trying to label people in a whole you know different why? continent. Because African. when I shared the information of the mu mural of Bonempak, a Congo girl just left a message in comment and say ah you know when you say bonham park it's remind me in my language the kikongo that benampaka that's mean the sons of the uncle sons of the uncle 
So Bonham Park, when I said that to a Congo, you he heard Benham Paka, sons of the uncle. I noticed after that that the nobility, the royalty of Congo, they wear leopard skins for her. And uh, jaguar uh, skin for Bonham Park people is for the nobility. And it's the very same. If you compare the leopard and the jaguar, we know we know Maya, the Maya and their whole uh, history and mythology. We know the ancient Mount peoples and their history, and, and we know about the origins of a lot of these people in America. And and they go, they're dating themselves to there. They're not saying they came from Africa or anything like that. So I see a reverse, like like in the title of this of this video, uh, you know, a history in reverse. And when we're talking about the homie, I got a future video of how they relate to the Carib language, with the homie, and, and to the Tupi and the South American tribes. And that's a whole big research. Uh, shout out to Kiowa for doing that. He's been linking that up, a lot of these uh, African dialects with the South American languages. And um, on the cover of this video, you had the um, the Bush. You wanted me to put the, uh, the Bush Negroes of uh, South America. They have a specific name. Do you remember the name of them? Uh, it starts with an S. Bushinenge. And also the Boni people. And also the Juka people. And also the Juka, Saramaka. The, how do you spell? Saramaka. Saramaka. That's, that's the guy. That's the guy that's in the cover. Saramaka. Yeah, it's, Sa it's, yes. Saramaka. Yeah, Saramaka. It's, so they try to call them. They try to call them Maroons and all that. You know, they try to say these are um, shipwrecked Africans. That's the story behind uh, these people in South America. Now, uh, it's we, totally something false. That, yeah, something we're going to really study and investigate. I know South America was uh, had its own, what you would call so-called Negro Bushmen and then the jungles of the Amazon. We, I know this for a fact. Um, so it's Maroons people. So they, they'd explain them as Maroons people. Formerly called Bush Negroes in the Republic of Suriname and one of the Maroon peoples in French Guiana. So that's the story they tell us Maroons. So what's a Maroon? A Maroon's a runaway, right? The word Maroon. So this is a picture. And you know, this is something weird because the name of the King of Congo, it's American Indian name. You know um, that the great spirit Mm -hmm. uh we say uh gichi manitu it's mean the oh, great manito spirit. yeah manito and uh, yes yes and when you say the 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 title of the royalty of the king of congo you say mani congo mani is the very same root that manitu because manitu is a word that uh express the notion of the ruler of the universe and uh, the king of congo is a ruler too so that's uh, that's why i made a relation between the two etymology of the two words uh, manitou and mani congo because the mani congo is the king of congo the ruler of congo yeah i, I, I see many relations that's what i'm and, saying uh, and i but i see it in reverse i don't see it like uh Especially when they're talking about they're not from that same area either. They're 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 their stories, their local stories as well. You know, they're they they tell them they came in from somebody else, somewhere else. And there where is they not get... such a divinity or a god called Manitou in Africa. There is not such a, a, a tradition. Because so you I, won't I, I, find anywhere in Africa a god of a divinity of an entity called Manitou. There is not. So it is only in America that you will find uh, this tradition of uh, Gichimani too. Yeah, you know, we were seeing, uh, we know that uh, they were bringing Indians over to Angola. So it says here, after 1650, Angola was virtually a colony of Brazil. And we can be sure that many persons of American ancestry went there. In addition to the normal kinds of contact, Angola was used as a place for sending Americans and other persons who proved troublesome in Brazil. And Caeta, Ka 
For example, mixed blood and American undesirables were periodically rounded up and shipped off to Angola. After about 1740, the island of Fernau de Noronha also, was also used as dumping ground for such people. In the south of Brazil, Americans and other non-whites were deported to Angola for gold smuggling or for using a route of passing uh, through a region exposed to attack by free American uh, forces. And let's continue. It says, quite early, Americans were used in the settlement of Fernão de Noronha Island. In 1602, Portuguese men was residing on the island with 13 and 14 Negroes. In 1612, a French vessel found only Portuguese with a few tapuyas of both sexes. So a tapuya is a, a Brazilian tribe. The French removed the Americans to Maranhão. The Portuguese generally referred to Tupi-speaking Americans of coastal Brazil as Brazis or Brazilians, while the non-Tupi nations were often referred to collectively as Tapuyas. So like, this is what I was saying, the Tupi-speaking uh, people. All right, and uh, you can see uh, many of their dialects in African tribes and other parts of the world too. Many American slaves were resold uh, from Portugal to other countries, and this trade continued for at least a century. In 1592, for example, a widow of Lisbon sold Beatrice, age 12, originally from Pernambuco, Brazil, to the Canary Islands. Many Americans were sold as slaves in Spain, as revealed by the notary records of Seville and Valencia. It is not possible to be certain as to the numbers involved, since not all the slaves seem to have been properly registered, and also baptismal records are relatively scant. Moreover, many slaves are reclassified only as to their color. All right, so they, they start becoming just Negro. You know, you know something. It's very weird in history. The Arabic mm -hmm. source, Al Umari, uh, someone who uh, wrote chronicles uh, under the Sultanate of Egypt when uh, Kanga Mamsa Musa went uh, from um, uh, from Tibuktu, from Gao, from Mali uh, to Makkah. And uh, he uh, transited in Cairo. Uh, his story was uh, written by Al Umari. So I read this story in Arabic. And they were asking themselves where Kanga Mamsa Musa from Mali got all his gold. Mm -hmm. Because he had uh, 200 slaves uh, on the road who were wearing gold in dust mm -hmm. like uh, uh, not gold in brick but in dust he wanted to purchase some goods in the in the market of cairo and he spent so much gold that he decreased the economy uh of of uh, the money for 10 years so it made 10 years to recover the crisis okay. because he, he well, spent so much gold in the market that it devaluated the money of the country al umari just asked himself where did this king got all his gold and we know that abu bakari the second moved uh -huh. to Pernambuco okay. uh, <laughs> with at first with 200 ships and yep. one only one ship returned and after that they they got back to the Americas with 2,000 ships and then they never uh, uh, got back in Africa after that that's why they, Kanga Mamsa Musa uh, uh, became uh, the king because his grand brother went to the Americas in Pernambuco. So, uh, how, what years? What years was this? Important that we have to years? 13, 11, 13, 12. Okay. So, 1300s. The, the official, you're saying 2,000 ships uh, went to Brazil uh, and stayed and, and stayed two, behind. 2,000, two, 2,000 and 200 because the first voyage was 200 ships mm -hmm. and the second voyage. Uh, was 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 2000 and they never got back to africa pernambuco is the same etymology of uh, mine gold that you can find between mali and senegal that call bur bambuk and some people say that bur bambuk it's uh, a name that it is related etymology 
of Pernambuco, Indian language. So we got 2,000 ships, right? You're saying 2,000 ships, so that's a lot of people. Uh, how many people in each ship? You know, so that's a lot of people being left behind. So where's all the trace of all these people in South America? Now, what if, you know, they actually were Americans and they went to Africa and went back home? very very possible it's because you know like you gotta like so you're because by the time columbus and the europeans come so who's to say who's who then like if there's so many people left behind and you know it's remind yeah. me the story of ophir you know this the city of ophir great zimbabwe this is a castle in the middle of nowhere yeah. and no one knows yeah. who built it no one knows some people say that it was the Shona. Some people say that it was the ancient Hebrew who escaped and flee to down South Africa. And um, some Zulu tribes uh, claim that they are not uh, African and not from uh, Africa. So they, would, you call, uh, would you call this a castle? They arrived. What would, you, what would you call this? So it's like a fort. It's like a fort, a little settlement. It's like a big fort, basically. Citadel, it looks like. Looks like some... Uh, and some people say that ancient. from the port of Sofala, uh -huh. that is on the coast of Tanzania, Hindu people, Arabic people, Indonesian people, and uh, even after that, the European people came in the port of Sofala, and the port of Sofala was the entry to the road to go towards this great castle. The first European explorers in the 19th century, when they found, found out this castle, they say that it was not uh, the inhabitant yeah. of uh, the era who built it. So who's the ancient and, architects? Uh, it's the Tupi number. Yeah. The so, Tupi number, uh, I, I, I have a record of uh, Brown University in a conference with documentation. Uh, there is a scholar woman. She uh, explained us that the Tupi number went in Congo as a stone maker, brick makers from, Who made did? from stones. The Tupi? Yes, they needed Tupi numbers. They shipped Topi numbers to Congo in order to make brick stones because they were known as good brick stone makers. People Zil, from Brazil. They were shipped. Okay. They were shipped to the Congo yes. to, to help build. They were the architects. Yes. Yes. Okay. But I want to say that the, the Tupi number people went to Congo before, before they were shipped. Yeah, uh, yeah. Because definitely... the documentation, uh, yes, uh, said that it was during the s uh, slave trade. Uh, 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 but I think that it happened before because we have many clues mm -hmm. that they were pre-Columbian contact. And I suppose okay, that so is a colony saying. of Negroes from the Americas. Yeah, so Kiowa, he's saying that he knows the story that the Tupi number were brought to Congo to build the forts and that they ended up running away. But he's saying that they were pro they were there before the Europeans. That's just the story they made up. The Tupi were already there. We know based on the language, uh, studying the language and the dialects of these people, you know, we, they had their language before Europeans got there and their language is very similar to the Tupi in the dialects. Uh, so, we, you know, we've studied that. So, you know, it makes sense. Um, you know, but that that just correlates with all the studies we've been doing because we know when we're talking about true old world, when we're talking about ancient people, ancient lands and stuff, we know there was ancient civilizations here. Somebody mentioned when rocks cry out by Horace, uh, we call him Horace Butthurt over here. He tried to take my channel down, mine and drops, and he tried to take down my City of David video because he didn't like that we were, you know, debunking the Pan African part. But you know, I don't, or I don't know why his reasoning was, but. Yeah, some great books there showing, proven this is the true old world over here. 
Um, we know maize. If you tra trace maize, we know that West African people had maize. We know it came from both sides of, uh, of Africa. It came from the, the, the other side too. They were The Asians were bringing in maize. Different types of maize were going into Africa from both sides uh, and Middle East as well. From the top of Europe, they were calling Turkish wheat. You know, the Muslims and the Arabs were bringing that as well. Uh, so, you know, we know when we talk about true world and people migrations, you know, we try to correlate with every, all the information. Um, so, uh, you know, yeah, people can say, well, out of Africa, out of this and that, and, you know, but uh, you got to show me all the correlation, everything. And, uh, you know, we've just studied so much. Um, you know, if you've gone over a lot of good information uh, with us today, um, you know, I appreciate, you know, all the information you can, you know, you've, you've, you've had, you know, you've, you've had private conversations with me and we've talked a lot more about this stuff. Uh, but yeah, your, your research from what you, you know, you know, correlates, you know, from your travels and everything, it's not just from what you research, you've been to these places. So it's not like somebody that says, well, you've never been to Africa and all that. Well, you, you've been there and you can, you've I talked to the people, you've seen the history. You, Actually, you've seen it, I so. speak fluently a language of Africa. Uh -huh. which is spoken in Mauritania, in Mali, in Guinea, and uh, Gambia, and, uh, and Senegal. And this particular uh, uh, language is called the Wolof language. I am fluent in Wolof. Mm -hmm. I speak better Wolof than I speak English. Okay. okay. So, yeah, you, you that's what I'm saying. So a lot of people can, you know, just, you know, you know question with the information or you're not just making it up it's but from your uh, experience and what you've learned and uh, a lot of it correlates my mother tongue is creole and when i studied my mother tongue i found out there is thousands more than three thousand and five hundred words in uh, different uh, origin of american indian uh, uh, languages okay. tupinamba nahuatl yeah. uh, arawak okay etc Tainos wow. with etymology of aboriginal american tongues in creole okay well maybe one day we can do that again on another episode of uh Kudimil meditation so we can just definitely have you on and uh you're saying the creole language you've seen that it has your your french creole language right you have uh the tupi namba yes, you have french uh, arawakan you have arawakan you have taino in it and uh you most likely have some ladino uh, or the french or the french uh the french element what do, you, uh, what do you think the French element is? So I would say the French element is not real French because the people at that time, they did not speak French. Okay. I wanted to say earlier that French had been the um, official language and imposed on all the territory of uh, France uh, because at that time, uh, each region had its own language. There were more than 50 different language in France before Napoleon but after the second revolution because all people know the first revolution so-called French revolution in 1789 but the records said that the real revolution of the people with the, the, the group called the communard it's the real revolution in 1848 1848 this is the real revolution and um, mm -hmm. in 1850 they declared officially that French from Paris is the French for all and they erased all the patois all the tongues the, yeah. the mother tongues of the yeah. and nowadays there is only a few bunch of people in each region who still speaks the original language but when you go to little Brittany, american people speak still speak american and uh, when you go to uh, marseille uh, a lot of people uh, speaks uh, uh, provincial Provincial. A lot of people in in Toulouse, in uh, in Montpellier, they speak Occitan. And uh, when you go to Perpignan, people speak Catalan. When you go to uh, Alsace-Lorraine, pe people speak uh, 
uh, a dialect uh, close to German and uh, and so on and so on. So when you go each region, they have their own language until nowadays. And that's why you have so much different accent in French, in France. And um, you have to know that Creole was so, spoke yeah, so before that, French and okay. centuries before French yeah. was official language of France, Creole was spoke in the Ramekas by millions of people before mm -hmm. the, the language of France was officially declared as official. Find words from the, the, the ancient people who came here and they did not speak French. They, they spoke various patois and mm -hmm. you have in Creole uh, many uh, etymology from those different Uh, French patois, you know, and those French patois are the roots of the French of nowadays. So you can find the roots of the French, the modern French in the ancient uh, uh, Occitan, for example, or, or Catalan, or Languedoc. It's or uh, that's why in French you, you have German uh, words, you have Latin words, you have uh, Aboriginal American words, you have thousands and thousands of words in French that are not French, that are actually Aboriginal American uh, language. For example, how do you say peanuts in French? We say the very same word of the Nahuatl, we say cacahuete. And the words in Nahuatl is tlal cacahuatl. And in French, we say cacahuete. It's the very same word. So uh, when uh, you talk to a French people, say you want some cacahuete. <laughs> It's a, a Nahuatl word. And, uh, you know, uh, amak. I don't know how to say amak in, in English. So I got what I'm showing everybody on the screen. Is if anybody doesn't know Armorican, it's a Celtic dialect called also Breton. So the ancient Britons, the ancient Celts, the ancient Gauls spoke this Armorican language. It was the national language of the independent Duchy of Brittany and is still spoken in modern French departments of Finisterre, Morbihan and Cotes du Nord. The language is closely allied to the Welsh, Cornish, Manx and Gaelic. All right. So let me just uh, quick share another one. And I have here, it says Celtic, same as Celtic, a division of the Aryan family of languages represented by Armorican, Gaelic, Irish, and Manx, and now extinct Cornish and Welsh. All right, so this is a future video, you know, a little spoiler here, but, you know, just take the R, again, let me go back. Take the R, the first R off, what do you have? Am Amorican, right? American, Amorican, Ar Amor Amarik. And you were mentioning about that, the married people, America, American, Amaru, the American. So you're saying Patois, you, you said it earlier, Patois. So what is Gaelic and, and, and it has to do with Patois and the Jamaican speaking, a bro, what they call a Creole English or broken English? Are they really speaking the ancient Armorican? You know, part of the ancient Armorican. And that's a future video. That's what I, I meant. Yeah, that, that's that's what I want to explain. Yeah, I wanted to go ahead and explain to people exactly what you, what you're saying, and and, it's, and it tells you right here, French department. So, you, so I believe, like you were saying, that the Creole, the French Creole, contained a Morican. It had the Tupi, it had the Arawak. Um, you said um, Taino, yeah, Taino. Yes. Okay. We in Creole we have words like uh, Wasu, Tulu, Tulu. Uh, Kui, uh, kui uh, it's a kalbas uh, Arawak word, amak. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, can you check it? The, hamaka. Can you check the definition? That's, uh, like, the hamaka sounds hamak. like a yeah, the hammock. Yeah, hamaka. Yeah, no the matter. hammock. Yeah, we say in Spanish una maca. It's, it's an Arawak uh, word. And um, yep. in French, we have no other words to say this. We have to use this word because it's in the dictionary. And for example, yeah. you know, the people of Normandy, they uh, had an alliance with the Tupinamba people against the British. 
Two P. So okay. uh, they they brought a, a vegetable from Brazil in Normandy, and uh, they gave it uh, a name in French, and the name in French is Topinambour. It's vegetable. When you look out, look at the etymology in dictionary. It is said that it's from the tribe name of Tupinamba. So they okay. they franchise the word Tupinamba and they name this vegetable from Brazil Tupinambu. And okay. at first, when I, I I I discovered that, I was like <laughs> shocked because. For me, it was like a traditional vegetable of France. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, there is a typical uh, meal in France that we call le hachis parmenti. Okay. And it is made with potatoes. And in French, to say um, uh, potatoes, we say, we say patate. And uh, in uh, Espanol, We say papa. In, uh, how do you say in Spanish? We just say papa. Or papas. Okay, okay. Okay. Uh, but in French we say patate, but the, the, the Indian name is batata. Okay, batata, batata. Yeah. 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 Yeah, so that's so a. The it's Spanish an, took it's the a, name this in is French. A... This is a plant, this is a vegetable, I'm sorry, a root that originated in the Andes uh, in South America, and the, mostly in that region. That's what most uh, potatoes have, they've been studied, they studied that it originated in. Uh, so another American plant that's distributed all over the world. It's not an Irish thing, it's not, you know, but why did the Irish have potatoes? Patatas. You know, in France, uh, we have um, uh, a tree that gave a, a kind of uh, fruit called la châtaigne and before okay. uh, before to know the word uh, marron that means brown in french uh -huh. uh, and in spanish uh, at first they arrived in uh, uh, in uh, hispaniola but it was not hispaniola <laughs> and uh, they asked the people who were they And they say Simaran, and they heard in their language the Spanish. They they, they just uh, trans, uh, translated in Spanish Simaron, Simarones. And the French they took the word on the Spanish, and they transform it in 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 French to say Marron, Marron. It's the very same etymology, the same roots of cimarron. But in French, we just uh, don't say the C, we just say marron. And when I check out in dictionaries, I discovered that this word entered the dictionary of the, the French language in the uh, 18th century. That means that before the 18th century, the word marron did not exist in French. And to uh, use uh, another word, we add uh, a word like I said earlier, la châtaigne. Because la châtaigne, it's a kind of fruit uh, in winter in France, but uh, it's the same color, it's brown. It's the same color of that we use today, uh, the word marron. But before to say marron, we say couleur châtaigne, color of châtaigne, or color uh, vermeil, couleur vermeil. There is a many uh, definition. There is a definition, they say that it is um, like a domestic pig that returns to uh, sauvage life. And uh, at first, it's it's been said that it's a domesticated uh, uh, pig, 
but uh, that pig returns to a uh, natural environment and uh, he became back uh, uh, at the state of uh, savage, savage state, as they say. So uh, that definition was transferred onto the escaped slave. Like they said, they were hiding in the mountains and they said also that Cimarron could mean the people who stay up the mountains, who hide, who run uh, up the mountains. And <clears throat> when you go further, you find out that this is not the only definition. This is the definition that they want you to know. But when you go deeper, you see that Simaran is the very uh, same roots with Siminoli. And when I studied the roots, the etymology of Siminoli, I saw that it was a uh, Indian language. Uh, you pronounce Simalonihili. And it means the people who, who run fast like arrows. You have the notion, you have the concept of going fast ahead. Going fast ahead to escape. Very fast. Uh, escaping, go, go ahead fast like a arrow. So you can... Uh, also relate this uh, notion with the imaginary mm -hmm. that we all have about Indians because when you talk about Indians you talk about arrows <laughs> too because they hunt. Yeah. So um you know and, the uh, word the word sounds like it's a it's a it's an American word and that's why the French didn't have it. Um now you're saying as fast as an arrow People who are fugitive, people who are running away, are moving fast always. So I can see why it would be related to a fugitive or somebody who's running away, because he's fast like an arrow. He's in marron, you know. And then Sima, as it says here, like you're saying, top. Sima means the top. That's in Spanish. It means the top. So it's people who run fast to the top, right? And I'm going wild in the, in the mountains. So what I'm trying to say here is. This doesn't tell me genealogy. Anybody can run fast and go to the mountains. It could be an Indian. It could be a Sephardic Jew. It could be a Moor. It can be some. It can be anybody. A Black Irish. It can be anybody. That's what I'm trying trying to tell everybody. It doesn't general. You can't generalize with this word meaning a, a specific person. And that's all I want to say at, with this. The reality is that that a lot of the Black Europeans that were coming to work in the plantations and the sugar fans, they were they were running away too with the Indians. So it's not just Indians that they were labeling maroons. Because they had skills for agriculture. And um, well, well, that's what I'm saying. Like based on the genealogy that we've been doing, I haven't run into anybody who's 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 who's, who's, who's sending came from Congo, Morocco. Maybe it does exist in somebody's genealogy, but so far I've seen indentured servants Huguenots, indentured servants Black Irish, uh, English. And I, I did one the other day or yesterday or today, and um, they were an indentured servant and they were sent to a plantation. And we found the plantation name in Maryland and it doesn't list anything about, you know, slaves or anything. Like when you really go get specific, um, you know, when you do so. So in general, I don't see a, a like if there was Africans coming, it's not a it's not a majority. You know, it's not a majority at all so far. We know that the Creek Nation splitted. And that's why a lot of tribes run into Florida. And when I was in the archive and the libraries of South Beach and Miami-Dade County, I found out in the books that it's only since 1930 that uh, they dried the land of Florida by uh, a process to dry the lands because it was all a, a mangrove. 70% of the territory of Florida was a mangrove. It was the best field to escape.
escape because when you go deep into that mangrove, nobody, even an army, can get you. The Seminole is not a tribe. It's a term to designate all the tribes that run like a, a arrow, the splitted Creek Nation. And uh, the, the split of the Creek Nation, it's another story, but uh, they started to have prisoners and sell the prisoners to some of uh, the colonizers. About two million people from South Carolina, Indians uh, in Charlestown, were sent to the Caribbean, like Barbado, etc. And we have letters from Barbado, from the governor of Barbados, who wrote to uh, Charleston in the uh, in USA, and he is asking to the, um, the captive sellers over there not to brought other Indians in the island because they always organize rebellion. So they don't want them no more. If you, 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 you do your own research, the governor of Barbado wrote to uh, Charlestown in order uh, to stop, <laughs> to, uh, to send uh, Indians to, uh, to Barbados because they organize rebellion all the time. Yeah. Yeah, Barbados is one of those uh, biggest spots for they were dumping a lot of the world. the Indians. They were demon wild and they were very hard to uh, negotiate with or move out of the lands, right? Because they were they were um, fighting back. They were fighting back. Uh, so yeah, Barbados was a spot. We did a little thing about you know the so-called first uh, so-called Negro that they brought to Barbados. They were actually coming from South America. And they brought them so they can help them dive and, and, uh, and work the fields there. And uh, so, you know, they it was it was, it was they even admitted that the first two so-called Negroes and that uh, one of them was an Indian. The other one was just a Negro. They called them. They don't know. They're not saying what genealogy, what country, what tribe. They're just saying a Negro and an Indian, and, you know. And um, so and they came from South America. They were coming from Africa. So. We've done a, a lot of the, on that, and, uh, and we know a lot of the Pequots and a lot of the New England tribes, uh, Northeastern tribes got sent down there, Indians from North, uh, South Carolina, Virginia, the Carolinas. A lot of them got sent down there uh, to Barbados, so yes. And uh, there is a scene in the film, uh, Amistad, that uh, we can debunk. When they arrive, in the great islands of the Caribbean, like Cuba, mm -hmm. they had to transfer their uh, captive from one boat to another boat. And when they transferred those so-called African Negroes, they renamed all those captives one by one in a book. And in the film, they say, ah, we have to pretend that those Negroes are Creolios, are Creole Negroes, because the English in 1807, they abolished the trade slave. But not okay. the uh, not the slavery, not the slavery because the slavery, it's uh, decades later. But the slave trade, I mean, the shipping and some and some people they just confuse with that the, the abolition of the, the 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 slave trade and the abolition of the slavery. It's not the same, and some people sometimes are confused about that. And okay. it's not to be confused because in 1807, they abolished the slave trades. And in 1848 in France, mm -hmm. they abolished slavery. Yeah. And for the English is 1838. Okay. And 
decades later for the United States and decades later for Brazil. That meant that if it was allowed to sell Creole Negro slave, but it was not allowed by the law to sell African after 1807. Do you know that? Mm. After 1807, it was forbidden to ship African captives in the Americas. Okay. It was forbidden. And if you were caught, you you will have to go to, to court or to jail or pay the seas your your boat and your and all your stuff you know yeah. it was a crime by the law you have after uh, 1807 so when you notice that uh, the time of the film uh, amistad it it is after 1807 so it was not allowed by the law to ship African captives to the Americas to be sold as slave. But the slavery was not yet abolished. So <laughs> it was allowed to have slave, to sold slave, but not to take them in Africa. So where was the Negroes? To be sold mm. at that time mm. if they yeah. it was not allowed to sold africans from the Af from africa after eight, 1807 huh? yeah so I when see, I see you, you think about that there was a silent slave trade untold in mm. the americas between amazonia the saramaca the njuka the boni and the Bushinenge and other tribes that are Negro Indians of Amazon from the valley of the Orinoco, the original Indians, Aboriginal, the real Maya. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and uh, some people think that uh, uh, they are African be because they look like uh, Congo people. Yeah. But maybe it's the Congo people who look like those people. Yeah. Because when exactly. you think about the silent slave trend after 1807, yeah. it doesn't mean that it did not start in that way before 1907, but they just continued to do that after that particular death because it was not longer allowed to ship captives from Africa. <laughs> it's something to meditate. Yep. And even Where then, were... even, even with that story, you got to check the story. So, so yeah, it's all this, is what you're saying, definitely something to think about and try to put your logic behind it, you know? They were still... Indians, Negro from the Amazon, from uh, Central America, Belize, Honduras, etc., yep. and uh, and and the United States, like a, a cycle in the Caribbean, yep. and Brazil, yep. and they were uh, called African, but mm -hmm. it was only allowed to sell Creole Negro, hmm. and Creole Negro is American. Indian. Creole, it's a word of assimilation, of acculturation, because it means that you were born and raised in a plantation. Mm. It doesn't mean that you are not an Indian. They just want to creolize there you, you. There you go. So it's not always just Indian. That's what I'm saying. You know, and a lot of people were sent to plantation, not just Indians. Um, like I was saying today, earlier today, there was a, a person, uh, I believe he was a hugging that he was sent to a plantation. Now we had the records and everything and even say he was indentured seven years. Uh, he had to work in this person's plantation to pay his passage over to America. You know, so that's that's what I'm saying. So, I mean, I'm glad you you, you broke that down. Um, and, it, you know, um, it's been a, it's been great having you on, uh, brother. Like we're probably going to do this again another time. Um 
the image that you you are showing now mm -hmm. on the right we supposed to have a guy called Antonio the first of Congo but okay. for me that guy is not uh, a Congo he maybe became the king of Congo but he is not he's from Brazil oh okay And, uh, so that's a Brazilian right there So the, yes. the way you okay, so let me just uh, zoom in. Yes, okay. yes, yes. But like in Daome, that it's a, a historical fact, uh, no, very well known that there is a Brazilo African. They they say that he was mixed between Brazil and and Daome. He was supposedly a, a slave in Brazil, and <laughs> uh, when he was freed. He started a business of, of slave and he was supported by the European, financed by the uh, Jew of Holland, and they paid to have an army. He uh, kicked out the king. He took his place. And uh, okay. it is very well documented, but it is in French. So well, honestly, he, he, he looks like um, the Portuguese navigators. And... Um, Um, I know that uh, Sephardic Jews and all these people were in Brazil. I know that they, a lot of them did mix in with Indians. A lot of the Indians did come over. We, we, we read earlier that the Brazilians were colonized in Angola. The guy on the left. Was, Saramaca. He, yes, it's a Saramaca. But it's an Indian Negro of Amazon. When you look at those two pictures, some people would, would prefer to say that it's the guy on the left that is a Congo. It's a Congo. And the other one mm -hmm. that's maybe is Brazilian, but uh, the guy on the left is definitely a Negro Indian, Aboriginal American <laughs> from the true old world, not right? the Congo. <laughs> yeah, from Mount Roraima coming out. Of, that's you know that the Amazon. There's still a lot of mysteries to be found there. There's a lot of history in the Amazon, and I do believe it. You know, I know it. Uh, you know, and I, we see it in the languages, and uh, we see the. the Uh, spreading uh, we see these architects as you we were talking about these people these bringing their knowledge of building their their, their knowledge of agriculture the maize and all the cassavas and all the potatoes bananas plantains sugar all that from the americas you know in conclusion i would say when i was in africa all the things that we were uh, eating as food every meal Most of the the ingredients are, f are from America. In uh, Nahuatl, we say tamatl, tomatl. And in French, we took the Indian name and we say tomat. And we say tomato in English, but it's an Indian name. And there is a lot of uh, word in English that you will be stupefied when I will explain to you that it's an Indian name and not English. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i, I mean uh, definitely believe you know that. the peanuts um, the the peanuts uh, there is a, a typical african uh, meal that we call the mafe sauce and it's a sauce uh, made with a peanut uh, and they 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 make a sauce and and uh, chicken or, or or fish and rice and but it's not African. When I asked the elders in Africa what they were eating before colonization, they told me that it's not rice. The people eat over there, like manioc, cassava. It's not from Africa. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, <laughs> they said that it's traditional for them and, and it's not African. So think about that. I know that um, we've gone over in my corn videos that in Africa, uh, out of the 640 crops they have, you know, 600 of them originate in America. All right. So just, you know, just that alone, you know, I've got a future video on this as well. I've been trying to, you know, this is something I had and I, I planned for long ago. I just haven't done it and researching other things, but I want to, I'm going to show you guys all the fruits and vegetables that are from America that are used in Africa. And you tell me which one's a true terrestrial paradise, a place of abundance, a paradise, you know, like, like for real, like in part two of Untold Ancient American True, we saw when they got here, the Spaniards and Portuguese and all these other auxiliaries as a, uh, because we know they brought up African auxiliaries. We read that too in my Columbus and Negro Friends video. 
they were bringing African auxiliaries and that's probably what uh, Jesus was letting us know about the Congonese ambassadors and all these people that were helping and coming and enslaved people as well and selling them. Um, we read that. So this is all true history. And uh, of course, you know, all these plants, all these fruits are from here. That's telling you, you know, <laughs> where's, where's, where's uh, a true garden of Eden, a true garden of Eden. You know, again, 600 crops in Africa out of 640 they have. Uh, come from America, 600. So, you know, do the percentage and the numbers right there. Uh, but yeah, so uh, just a thanks, you know, once again uh, for joining us today. If you're just alone, hey, man, you're not alone. You're really not alone. You know, you're, you're not alone. Uh, we're here with you. Tribe up, you know, wise up, you know, unity. Let's vibe up, build, build and learn. Keep learning and teach, teach everyone else. Much love and respect. Abizo Breeze with the beat. He's going to let us out of here. Much love, everyone.